Heavenly Father, we do thank you because you have brought us here for a good purpose to learn. I will pray that every distraction you take away from our hearts in Jesus' name. Shine the light forth into every heart and speak your truth to everyone that we will understand the word, believe the word, accept the word, obey the word, and this word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Take unbelief away from every heart. Take careless, frivolous attitude away from every life. And the heart that comes to the word of God without seriousness and without looking at the things for eternal value, take all that away from us in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to have the mind of Christ and to have the mind of those Thessalonian believers and Berean believers who searched the word to find out that these things were so and to live in the power, in the light, in the knowledge, in the truth of the word of God in Jesus' name. We pray that Satan will not take your word away from any heart. But Lord, this word will do good in every heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're studying from John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 30. Then it says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. The primary audience of Jesus Christ, the immediate audience of Jesus Christ, the present audience of Jesus Christ, in the passage we're reading, they're referred to as the Jews. The Jews were the children of Israel. But as you look at the gospel according to St. John, some of them believed, and many, many of them did not believe. Look at that verse again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, he told them, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And now we're talking about the Jews to start with. The Jews were given a great privilege. Actually, they had great advantage beyond all other people. When you think about the nation of Israel, and you think about all the other nations around them or beyond them, they had great privilege, great opportunity, and great advantage. In fact, we're told in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Here Paul, the apostle writing to the Roman believers, wanted to know about the Jews. What do you think about the Jews? Their advantage, their privilege, and their opportunity. It tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 1, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? The word circumcision there is standing for the Jews. It says much every way. It says whatever angle you are looking at it, the Jews had great advantage. It says much in every way, chiefly, primarily, and uh, with priority and preeminently because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto them. You look at Genesis all through to Malachi. It came from those uh, Jewish uh, prophets that God had raised up. And he said, what a great privilege they had. And when Jesus Christ came, he began to announce the uh, gospel of the grace of God. The apostles came, they began to announce the gospel of the grace of God. You know what they said? They said, the Jews forced. They went to the Jews because they already had understanding of the Old Testament. And now they went to the Jews. Look at uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Listen to this. To the Jew first and also to the Greeks. That means uh, even when the gospel came, gospel of grace, and the dispensation of grace in the early church, in those early years, all the apostles went to the Jew first, and they went to the Jews, they said, this is the prophet, and this is the Christ, and this is the Savior, this is the Messiah, that the Lord himself said he was going to send, he has now sent him, and we come to you first, so that you will believe and then you'll be the mouthpiece of the law to talk to the rest of the world to the gentiles acts of the apostles chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 46 acts chapter 13 verse 46 then paul and barnabas 
uh, talking to the Jews, waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God shall first have been spoken in, uh, unto you. Look at that. All the apostles, they went out, they started in Jerusalem, who are there? Jews. They went to Judea, who are there? Jews. They went to Samaritans, and the Samaritans, they were half Jews and half Gentile. And it says, It was all right. It was befitting. It was according to the word of the Lord that the word, the gospel, what of salvation? What of eternal life? The word that will point the way to heaven for us shall have been spoken to you first. And then, but it says, See ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. God wanted all of them to be saved, but were not saved. He wanted them to have the great privilege of having the word of God. They toyed with it. They gambled with their chance. They threw the chance away. And Paul, the apostle, said, Well, I'm going to waste the whole of life with you. We're going, not to, going to waste all the dispensation of grace and the period of preaching the gospel with you. Since you have rejected it, we're going to the Gentiles. Look at verse 47. For so, as the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the ends of the earth. You see, they missed the opportunity. They lost the advantage. And the great things God wanted to do for them, they couldn't get those things. The same thing happened at the time of Jesus Christ because he now came to them and all those Jews who were there. He was in Jerusalem. He was in Capernaum. He was in all those places where the Jews were. They came. It's not that they didn't come. They heard. It's not that they didn't hear. And they listened. It's not that they were not paying attention. But they rejected they abused their opportunity. They misused their opportunities. Some believed, but many of them remained in unbelief. And it's the same today. And we in this, our church, Deeper Life Bible Church, were like those Jews. We have the word of God. And it's taught from cover to cover. Every Monday we're here. Our leaders are there on Tuesday. Our members are there on Thursday for revival. And they were there on Saturday for the workers. And Sunday we're there. And we open the pages of scripture. And the light is shining every time. And we go thoroughly through all the things that will give eternal life to everyone that hears, our children are hearing, our youths are hearing, our women are hearing, our men are hearing, but then what are we doing with the word? Are we so familiar with the word like the Jewish people that we abuse our opportunity and we misuse our privilege and we misuse our advantage? They were full of unbelief. Look at Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. Mark chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus Christ looked at them and said, you don't know your time. You don't know your opportunity. And you don't know the advantage that you have. And he looked at them, those Jewish people, and he marveled at their unbelief. We're looking at Romans chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 20. The unbelief of the Jews surprised him, amazed him, and it made him to wonder, how could people be like this, that the Lord is giving them such a great privilege? A place reserved for them in heaven, and yet they close their eyes, they close their minds, they will not listen, they will not accept, because they have other agendas in their mind. Romans chapter 11 verse 20, it says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. Jewish people, the sons and the daughters of Abraham, and the people that should have got eternal life first. It says they were broken off and they were sent away, and they missed everlasting life, and they lost everlasting life, and they missed heaven because of their unbelief. I pray it will not happen to you. Amen. Did you say amen to that? Amen. We're looking at Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And we're still reading about these people. You know, when we say Hebrews, actually the Hebrews are Jewish, the Jewish people. And this was written peculiarly to those people that have believed among the Hebrews. So that uh, what happened to their forefathers and what happened to their grandparents, fathers and mothers will not happen unto them. And it tells us in Hebrews chapter 3, reading here from verse 13. 
13. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3. Let me back up to verse uh, 12. It says in verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. It says, take it. It happened to all the people. They had the privilege of hearing about salvation. They lost it. They had the privilege of hearing about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They missed their opportunity. And he's saying, brethren, those of us who are born again, those of us who are children of God, and those of us who are learning the word of God, it says, take it. It says, take it, brethren. Those are people who are saved. Take it, brethren. Those are people, the word of God had come to them. Take it, brethren. He was talking to the people that profess they want their way to heaven. And he said, yes, you must take it because there's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that jump on you. There's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that come into you. There's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that occupy your mind and occupy your head and occupy your heart that even though the opportunity is there, you miss the opportunity. It says in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Lest you cajole yourself, deceive yourself, delude yourself. Let's you tell yourself some lies saying, of course, I'm saved, I'm forever saved. We're children of Abraham. And if anybody got to heaven, we are going to get to heaven. How can we miss heaven? Abraham is there, Isaac is there, Jacob is there i must be there it says take heed and don't deceive yourself because of the deceitfulness of sin look at uh, verse 14 it says for we are made partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end i pray you'll hold on to the end look at um, hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 2 hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word was preached unto them, and it's being preached unto us. It says, but we're hearing the word. It says, but we know the gospel. It says, but we're people that are referred to as deep alive Bible church. But it says, but we're people that have the word of God explained every time, interpreted every time, applied every time to every area of our lives. It says, but look at this, the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it they heard it in the head they heard it of their ears but then because they were not paying attention it's like already i'm saved already i'm born again already i'm going to heaven whatever happens i know that heaven is my home whatever they are preaching I just came because i know i must come if i didn't come they will say why didn't you come and if i didn't come i'll not be able to do my thing that i normally do he says take it so that the word of god that is being preached will not go in one ear and then come out the other here. Look at that uh, chapter verse 6 now. I'm looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and I'm looking at verse 6. It says, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein. It's talking about entering to heaven and they to whom it was first preached entered not because God didn't want them to enter. Didn't God want them to enter? Of course, he wanted them to enter. It says, because of, tell me out loud, because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. It's not just enough to just sit down there. I'm hearing the word. It says they couldn't enter because of unbelief. Look at verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same manner, after the same example of unbelief. The unbelief of many did not hinder Jesus, did not hinder Christ from saying everything he wanted to say. He still preached his message, believe or not believe. He still had his ministry, whether they believed or not, and he still carried out his mission, and those who were saved will, will be saved. Those who will be saved will be saved. And the people that want to get to heaven, that say, I know how I came. I know why I came. I want to get to heaven. I didn't come here to just listen. I didn't come here to just uh, be part of the crowd. I didn't just come here to be a part of numbers, statistics. I came so that the thing will affect my heart, affect my life, affect my 
family, affect my children, affect everybody, and we get to heaven. I pray you'll be of that number. The mission of Jesus Christ was still done. He still finished his work, and he said on the cross, it is finished. The people that didn't believe, they were the losers. I pray you'll not be a loser. Jesus Christ sees us now. Multitudes of people that believe, they believed at that time some of them, and many of the people believe now, and the Lord still continues to prepare people for heaven, and thank God I'm going there. I say, thank God I'm going there. Whoever accepts, whoever rejects, I know I'm going to accept, and I'm going, I know I'm going to obey, and I'm, I know I'm going to get there. We'll get there in Jesus' name. We'll come back to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 tonight. We're looking at true discipleship and uh, freedom through Christ. True discipleship and freedom through Christ. We're looking at John chapter 8, and I'm reading now from verse 31. John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. He's telling us, it's not a one-time belief. I believe. And then we go back to the world. I believe. And then we go back to darkness. I believe. And then we go back to our sin. It says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And it says in verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. That means ye shall know the truth. You'll keep on learning. You'll keep on hearing. And you'll keep on assimilating. You'll keep on receiving the word of truth. It says, ye shall know the truth. And the more you know the truth, it says, the truth shall make you free. Look at verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, what will happen? Ye shall be free indeed. That means you'll be totally free. You'll be completely free. You'll be permanently free. And you'll be, you'll be free through and through, inwardly and outwardly, externally, and in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind. It says you'll be free. Every yoke will be broken. All the fetters will be taken away. Because the Son now comes into your life. It comes as Savior, sets you free. Comes as sanctification. Fire. It sets you free. It comes at the final sacrifice. It sets you free. It comes as a substitute. It sets you free. It comes as a shepherd. It sets you free. And it comes at the all in all in your life. And any yoke and anything that binds you, it breaks everything and you're free. And thank God today, the word that sets free is coming to you. Every yoke will be broken. Every oppression will be taken away. And everything that ties you down there, that you couldn't move forward, that you're not free tonight, freedom has come. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Now we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, true freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness with the Son. True freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness with the Son. But we're going to discover as we read other parts. Point number two, the falsehood and delusion. Delusion is self-deception. Those who tell themselves lies, and they tell the lies over and over to themselves until they actually believe it, until they believe it. And they are acting that lie out, and it's self-deception. Uh, the falsehood and delusion of the servants of sin. The servants of sin. Point number three, the future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. The future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. We're coming back to number one. Tell me your number one. True freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness or the Son. I'm reading from uh, John chapter 8 again, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. It tells us here, he says, Then said Jesus to those Jews would believe on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. What Jesus said at that time is saying today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is not the one that will come back to you and say, oh, I made a mistake in that thing I said the other time. That was uh, for those people. Now I'm 
changing my word. I'm telling you this. No, it's ever remaining constant because what he said before is saying today, what he's saying today is saying tomorrow, and what he's saying tomorrow is saying till the end of time. And he's still telling us the same thing, you know? and he's telling us those of us that believe in him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Look at what the whole scripture is saying. It tells, it tells us of the people that believed in the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 42. Acts chapter 2, we're reading from verse 42. It says in verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine. See, those were the people that had known the Lord, and they came to the Lord in salvation. They repented of their sins. They said bye-bye to the world, and bye-bye to darkness, and bye-bye to evil, and bye-bye to all the traditions of the past, and bye-bye Bye to superstition. Bye bye to all their candle burning. Bye bye to all their incense. Bye bye to all their animal sacrifices. Bye bye to idolatry. And then they came to the Lord and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the testimony of the scripture is like this. And they continued steadfastly, not just uh, continuing sluggishly, continuing half heartedly, continuing. I don't know whether I really want to be in this or not. One leg in the church and one leg outside all of their hearts their minds and their totality came into the into the lord and then it says and they continued how i said it continued how and you will continue how in your office how do you continue in your home how do you continue as to interact with other people that you know they, they are not sure of who Christ is, they're not sure of salvation, but who are sure of salvation, how do you continue steadfastly? And it says they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I want you to look at Acts chapter 13. We're looking at verse 43. You'll find that this is always the same if you're a child of God. You're born again, you have come into the kingdom. It's one thing is to come. That's step one. The next step is to make sure that after you have come, I continue, I continue, I continue. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, we're looking at verse 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious personalists followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The grace of God has saved you. The grace of God has forgiven you. The grace of God has cleansed your life. The grace of God has turned you around. And the grace of God has removed darkness away from you. And light has come. And they persuaded them. They imposed on them. They prevailed on them. You must continue in the grace of God, in the word of God. We're looking in at chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says in verse 22, confirm the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Don't get back to unbelief. Continue in the faith. Don't get back into doubting. Continue in the faith. Don't uh, associate with the people who argue. Continue in the faith. Don't continue. Don't uh, go on in fellowship or friendship with the people that do not totally believe that will try to turn your mind forsake them, abandon them, come out of among them and continue in the faith and that we must through much difficulty, tribulation, persecution, trial, temptation enter into the kingdom of God. Thank God you will continue. I say thank God you will continue. There's an if there when Jesus spoke to those Jews said, if you continue, if you continue, don't think, well, I'm saved, I'm forever saved on one condition, if you continue. Don't think I'm a child of God, I'll always be a child of God on one condition, if you continue. And I want to ask you, those of us who have been born again for a long time, do you continue? Do you continue in your consciousness? Do you continue in your conscientiousness in following after the Lord? Do you continue in the tender heart that you had when you were born again? 
again? Do you continue in obedience to the word of God when you are born again? Do you continue in overcoming temptation? Do you continue in taking a firm stand and saying, no, this is the way I will walk therein. I'm not going to walk in darkness anymore. Do you continue in an uncompromising stand that you know in those days, after you became born again, they said, do this and do this. A mother may be telling you that. A wife may be telling you that. A husband may be telling you that. A child might say, daddy or mommy, eh, about this, you said, no, I, I came into this thing before you were born. Here is where I stand. Do you continue like that? Or now, are we now wishy washing? Are we now doubting? Are we now bending? Are we now compromising? You're going to miss heaven if you continue like that because it says, You are only my disciples if you continue in my word. And look at what the Bible is saying over here. We're looking at uh, First Timothy chapter 2, First Timothy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 15, First Timothy chapter 2, and here we're looking at uh, verse 15. It says in uh, verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. It's talking about a Christian woman who is pregnant, a Christian wife who is pregnant, and then she wants to deliver. And the Lord said, I can only give you assurance. There will be still safe delivery if you continue. Look at this. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. But uh, if it's like, you know, I'm, going, I'm expecting a child. I'm so happy now. We cannot be talking of holiness now. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have drum. We're going to have this and that. The thing to do it before the child, the pregnancy came through prayer. And now you're going to the world so that you can celebrate the answer to the prayer. It says, you know what? You're going to have safe delivery if you continue in the faith and you continue in charity and you continue in holiness with sobriety. Not what holiness. We're looking at first, uh, first Timothy chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 15 and verse 16. It says, meditate upon these things. If we learn and forget, learn and forget, when we get to the office, when we ought to apply the word, we're forgotten. When we're in our homes, we ought to apply the word, we're forgotten. When the thing that should affect our character, affect our stand, we're forgotten. That's not right. Because it's like we didn't come. It's telling us that we meditate on that word. It's as we meditate, you ruminate. You turn it over in your mind. You apply it to your heart. When I get to the office, that word, that's how I'm going to do it. That person that I've been trying to tell me to go the wrong way and this and that. Now I understand I must continue. I have the grace of God now. I'm going to have backbone and I'm going to stand. It is when we do that, we're going to benefit from the word. Look at that verse 15 meditate upon these things and it says give thyself wholly unto them that their profiting may appear unto all take each unto thyself and to the doctrine continue in them continue in them continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee somebody there will continue yeah. I will continue I said I will continue you're continuing in Jesus' name. It not, it's not just continue attending church. That's good. It's not just continue reading the Bible. That's good. It's talking about you continue obeying the word. Your conscience remains tender. Your life remains purposeful. And your obedience remains visible. That people will know like you were five years ago, obeying the word of God. That's the way you are now. You concentrate on the word of God. And you apply the word of God to every area of your life. And say, that's not right. I put it right. That's not right. I put it right. And your conscience remains tender. Your conscience remains soft. And it is impressed by the word of God every time. It tells us in uh, Second Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 12. It says, ye, and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. What we call persecution is that not everybody will agree with you. Therefore, they might frown at you. But what's that? You know, you're very weak. If, uh, you know, somebody frowning will make you to change your mind. If, uh, you know, somebody can say, okay, I'm not your friend anymore. That's the form of persecution. And you'll be a, a person that has no principle at all. If because of somebody said, okay, I don't like you anymore. Then you change your mind. Who are they? 
What can, what can they do? The Lord that is giving you breath and is giving you life, is giving you eternal life, is giving you heaven. He says, this is what you do. And this man that can give you nothing, they mean nothing to your life. And they offer nothing in your life. And they are the people to turn your mind. God forbid. I said, God forbid. Whatever they have, they are giving you. And they want to withdraw. Let them take all that away. Because God will supply your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever they take away, let them take that away. In fact, if you're a real child of God, if somebody does not believe what you believe, does not accept your faith, and does not accept that you want to get to heaven, and they offer something to you, say, no, I don't want that. You don't want to help something you don't agree with. Because this is the way I'm going. Going, I'm going to heaven. This is what I believe. I believe the Bible. And then if you give me this now, I'm going to use it for what you don't accept and what you don't support. You don't want to do that. I don't want that. All I want, I'll get from Christ. When you take your stand like that and people know that money is not too important to you and food is not too important to you, give me your accommodation and then you're messing you up. That's not important to you. Whatever they offer to you. That's not important to you. What's important to you is that this is the way, walk you therein, and you're going to walk there. And so if they persecute you, say, that's all right, I knew you're persecuted because you don't agree, and I know you're trying to discourage me from getting to heaven, but whether Satan likes it or not, I see somebody there that will get to heaven. Whether your relatives like it or not, I see somebody there that will get to heaven. And then that is why, whatever persecution you say, yes, I will take that. I will endure that, no matter what happens. Look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers, which shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou, but continue thou, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, and knowing of whom thou art has learned it you will continue as we continue what's going to be the result of that continuation i'm coming back to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 32 as well as verse 36 john chapter 8 we're looking at verse 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free look up here for a moment what if the day you were born again you stopped coming to church because now I'm born again. Everything you have known after you were born again, as you are coming to the services and the Bible studies and revival, you'll not know them as you continue. Then you will know what you didn't know before. And the truths you are hearing every Monday, every Thursday, and every Sunday, and for the leaders every Tuesday, and for the workers every Saturday, the truths you know will set you free. Thank God you'll be free. You'll be freer today than you were yesterday. Because freedom, freedom, freedom. The Lord and the Lord will project you forward after that freedom. Nothing will hinder you from your progress in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36. Verse 36 says, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free. Nobody else can make you free. Nobody else can make you free. Jesus Christ the Savior. Jesus Christ the Sanctifier. Jesus Christ the Emancipator. Jesus Christ the Liberator. He is the one that can make us free. And he says, if the Son, therefore, Therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed, you'll be free. But the question is, free from what? Free from what? We're looking at Romans, Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 18. It says, it'll make us free, but you need to ask yourself, free from what? Look at this, Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. That's what it means. Sin will hinder us from getting to heaven, and it says, it'll make us free from sin. Being then be free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now, being made free from, tell me, from sin. Being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end 
everlasting life. It makes us free, free, free from sin. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Listen to this, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from what? From the law of sin and death. You'll be free. Amen. Totally free. Amen. Completely free. Amen. And sin will not have dominion over your life anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're coming back, we're coming back now to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 33. John chapter 8, verse 33. This is point number two now. The falsehood and the delusion of the servants of sin. The falsehood and the delusion of the servants of sin. We're coming to John chapter 8, verse 33. Then answered him, will be Abraham's siege. And were never in bondage to any man. How seest thou? Ye shall be made free. These are Jewish people, Abraham's seed. And he said, Were Abraham's seed, and we were never, never, never in bondage to any man. Are you telling us I'll make you free? Look at verse 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. You're not as free as you thought. Because if you are committing sin, you are the servants of sin. Look at verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. The servant abideth not in the house forever. Look at the latter part of that verse. But the son, capital S, referring to Jesus Christ, abideth ever, abideth ever, abideth ever. Where does the son of God, Jesus Christ, where does he abide ever, 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 forever? Where? Tell me. Was he abiding here on earth forever? No, he's talking about heaven. It says, the servant will not abide in that place forever. But the son, capital S, will abide there forever. He was telling them, if you're not free from sin, because you're servants of sin, you're going to miss heaven because the servant does not abide in the house forever. Look at uh, verse 33. Verse 33, they answered him will be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man what's that they are bondage in servitude you see they, these people they were in bondage in servitude they served many nations they were slaves in many nations they were in bondage in egypt they were in bondage to the assyrians they were in bondage to the babylonians even at this time they were talking they were in bondage to the roman government and it was caesar not a jew a caesar that was ruling Ruling over them. The coin they were spending, the image and the superscription is the image of Caesar. Look at their lies. Look at their delusion. Look at their self deception. And they said, Whenever in bondage to any man, let's check up that statement. Never in bondage to any man. We're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Look at the Jews, the, the seed of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, I, I'm reading from verse 13. From verse 13, look at this. And he said unto Abraham, Know of his surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a strange in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for hundred years. These were the people that said, Never, never, never were we in bondage to any man. These were self deceivers. I pray you'll not be a self deceiver. We're looking at Exodus, Exodus chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 13 and 14. Exodus chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with what kind of bondage? Hard bondage. These were people saying, whenever in bondage to any man, of course they were in bondage. Deuteronomy, I'm reading from chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26, we're looking at verse 6. 
they were telling lies. Jesus knew they were telling lies. That's why he didn't even bother to answer them. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 6, it says, And the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. Look at these liars. Who are never in bondage to any man, and yet they were in bondage. I pray you'll not be telling lies against your own soul. Yeah. The Lord that could have delivered them, they didn't allow him to deliver them because they were in bondage. And I told you at this time, they were in bondage to the Roman government, to Caesar. We're looking at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. It says, and the whole multitude of them rose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. These were people, they knew that Caesar was ruling over them, and Caesar was a Roman uh, emperor, ruling over them. They were bonded to the Roman government, and yet, look at deception. They said, we were never in bondage to any man. Liars. They needed salvation, but they didn't accept they needed salvation. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 17. We're reading from verse 7. It says, Whom Jason had received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, one Jesus. Everybody knew that they were under the Roman bondage at that time, but look at what Jesus said. We're looking at John, John chapter 8. Sometimes when we go out to witness and uh, we're, you know, talking to people and we're talking to them so God can set them free and so that Christ can set them free. So the salvation of the Lord will come to them. They will say, well, what are you saying? I'm a good man. I'm not a sinner. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't run after women. I'm all right. This is how my heart is. People hurt me. I forgive them. I love them. Tell me, if anybody is going to get to heaven, I must get to heaven. And they are, all, they are telling lies. Don't allow that to put you off when they say they are righteous. How can they be righteous without salvation? How can they be righteous without meeting Jesus the Savior and Jesus the Lord? You will continue talking to them prayerfully and the Lord will open their eyes. And all that deception and all the things covering their side, everything will go away in Jesus' name. You know, you come to people and say, now be born again. Give your life to the Lord. They turn it to religion. They said, uh, which church do you go? You say, ah, wonderful. I, I, I like your church. Our church is just like your church. If you come to our church and you hear our pastor, he will open the Bible to you and all of us will rejoice. Salvation? Of course we have salvation. Born again? We're all born again and we're all going to heaven. We, we will go to church and not want to get to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I'm going to heaven. You'll be surprised. You'll see me there. Don't allow all that to put you off, still tell them the word of God, except we turned away from our sins, and there's a definite moment of time when we became born again, and then the Spirit of God bore witness with our heart that we're children of God, and there is a change a change our children will notice, a change our family will notice, a change our office will notice, a transformation of life and character that all our neighbors will notice, except that has happened. We are not truly born again and then you keep on prayerfully until they accept they will accept maybe you were like that before when people when somebody spoke to you you were first of all arguing like the jews and thank god the day of argument passed over and now you are a believer i said now you are a believer the same thing as we go to them and they argue and they tell lies against themselves. We're Christians, we're born again, we're going to heaven. I don't allow that you tell them pointedly, except a man be born again with a change of heart. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new until they now submit and surrender unto the Lord. We're coming to John chapter 8, and I'm looking at verse uh, 34. In verse 34, Jesus answered them. 
them verily verily I say unto you whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin verily verily I say unto you what's the next word there tell me out loud whosoever do you know something our title in christendom doesn't take us to heaven whosoever a bishop whosoever a general overseer whosoever a general superintendent whosoever the wife of a pastor whosoever a pastor preacher whosoever an international evangelist if he's living in sin it's not born again it's not born again no matter the name of the church no matter the title that he bears no matter he might go about like the pharisees is going to see is going to land is going by ear, is going everywhere and is preaching and preaching and preaching is spending his money is sacrificing but he's living in sin he says i'm a worker he's living in sin he says i'm a leader he's living in sin he says i'm a great uh, personality in our denomination in our deeper life but he's living in sin look at that whosoever whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin you know there are some young people they don't understand it may be somebody in the in our church he is uh, trying to uh, fool you and he's trying to lead you into sin i say ah, i cannot do that i cannot uh, what, what on, who are you what do you know well, i've been in this deeper life before you were born and whatever we do, God knows that everything is right. If it's wrong, will I tell you to do that? It's a sinner. It's trying to pull you into sin. His title does not mean that God will overlook what he's doing. His title, his position in the church does not mean that God is going to overlook anything he has done. Look at the words of Jesus Christ. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. It's in bondage to sin. Uh, look at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 23. Acts chapter 8. We're looking at verse 23. It says, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. This is a man who claimed to be born again. This is a man. Philip had baptized him in water. You know, it doesn't matter they are baptized in water. And then he was following Philip about. He appeared to even have forsaken the work he was doing. He was fully, completely, entirely following after Philip. And then Peter and John came from Jerusalem. They laid hands on people and those sanctified people and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and he wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost he said now I'll give you money I'll give you money name their mouth whatever their mouth I'll give you this money so that you can give me the Holy Ghost so that I too I'll go on demonstrating I'll go on everywhere I'll be laying hands on people and Peter told him your money perish with you I pray that we will be like this old like this uh, early church uh, apostles in Jesus name you see some people they need money so much they need money so much we need money to build the church we need money to do this and to do this, a businessman comes and is not living right. A businessman comes, is fraudulent. A businessman comes, is occultic. A businessman comes, is still superstitious and is still following through sorcery and witchcraft. And then he says he'll give us this. And whatever he does, you know, those people who say they are preachers, they overlook that. But thank God, Peter will not overlook that. You reject their money. I said you reject their money. The money of blood, you reject. The money coming from occultism, you reject. The money coming from dubious, sinful business, you reject. The money coming from destroying people's lives and scattering their families, and through that they are getting money, you reject all that. It's not because, you know, because of money, because we need this, we need that. We're not going to take that to heaven. It's good to have a good church building, but the church building is not going to be raptured when we're raptured. Am I right? I said, am I right? If you lose your soul because of church building, you lose your soul because you are trying to get this and get this and get this, then all those things you amass in the world, they'll mean nothing when the rapture takes place. That's the reason why we must take our stand and the people who are servants of sin and they bring money and they bring this and they bring that, you say, mm, do I need money? All I need is the grace of God and have this that grace of God. All I need is the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God shall man live. And I have that. I have all things.
I said, I have that, I have all things. Let all that blood money be taken away. In fact, if uh, you know all the sincere people of God and the good children of God, they contribute their little mites and their little pennies and their little fathers and everything adds up. And then you bring somebody that brings blood money, in mixing everything, it will spoil all the money there or destroy all their effects. We don't want their money or want their repentance want their genuine righteousness and want their salvation that's why he's telling us here we want to be totally clean and clear from sinning and supporting anybody in sin that's why peter said i perceive i perceive that thou art in the god of bitterness and in the bunch of iniquity sin is iniquity and i pray that god will deliver every one of us in jesus name you'll be free if you want to be free I said you'll be free if you want to be free. No man can tie a rope on your leg as a woman and say, you know, you're continuing. See, if you want to be free, you're going to be free. And no woman can, you know, hold you a hostage and say that only we've done that together. If you run away from me and say, pray for me, I'll report you to the church. Go ahead and report. You, you go to report yourself first and say, well, one woman is coming to report me. Before you say, she says what is going to say, I've been hypocritical. I've been living in sin. I've been living a terrible life and here am I now because you don't care for the position they give you in the church. You don't care for the thing you are holding on to. If uh, they hear the report, if I report myself, they'll take the office of the bishop from me. They'll take the office of overseer from me. What's that? What's that? That one is going to go up in the rapture. What will go up in the rapture is the people that are holy unto the Lord. And therefore you say go and report. Let's go together. I'll even tell you, I'll tell you the person you ought to report to and I'll take you there and then she talks and you talk yes everything she says is true I am a sinner a backslider but I'm repenting now and I'm going my way to heaven that woman will be ashamed then all the rope that tied you together everything is caught let the church say amen, amen. Look at this in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. You see that? Those preachers, they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage. You will not remain in bondage. I said you'll not remain in bondage. Did I hear a good, good amen? I'm looking at John, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, in verse 33, that's their bondage in servitude. In verse 34, that's their bondage to sin. In verse 35, that's the banishment of sinners. Look at that, banishment of sinners. We're looking at uh, John chapter 8, and in verse 35, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. That is, the servants of sin will not get to heaven because they will be banished from heaven. Look at the meaning of that word, banished from heaven, in Lamentation chapter 2, verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. That's bondage, but they have seen up for thee false bodies are the causes of banishment false vision they encourage them don't worry don't worry you'll be all right and they're living in sin don't worry it will be all right at the end of the day and they're living in sin and it says that those are the things that cause them banishment that is eventually they'll be banished from the kingdom of god we're looking at uh, psalm 28 and we're looking at verse 3 psalm 28 verse 3 the people that remain in sin, they'll be taken away. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They cannot be in heaven at all. Because it says in Psalm 28 and in verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, draw me not away with the wicked, with the workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity. They'll be drawn away out of the premises of heaven, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Have you known people like that? The good, great pretenders. 
and they can talk, they can smile, they can embrace you, they can say, you know, I really appreciate you, you know, and I've been looking at you, and they have evil in their heart, evil intention in their heart. They really want to destroy you, and they want to take every good thing away from you, but they flatter you, they cajole you, and they deceive you, and because of that uh, deceit, and because of that deception, you fall into them, but it says, draw me away from them. The Lord will draw you away from them. You'll not be part of them in Jesus' Jesus name. Yeah, look at Psalm 101. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 101. Reading from verse 8. In Psalm 101 verse 8, I will early destroy all the wicked out of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. From the city of the Lord and from the heavenly city. They will be cut off. They cannot be there. There's going to be eternal banishment for them and they will not get to heaven. The New Testament says says it very clearly. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And here we're reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 19. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is soon that is cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone in worship, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is dancing, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is beating drum and saying Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is, uh, you know, fasting and praying and saying Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. You know, it's surprising today that some so-called deeper life uh, members, they are carried away by what they call miracle. They are carried away by what they call prophets. Say, come, come, come. There's a woman in our corner over here. She prophesies and then she interprets dream. And then she, if you have any problem, she'll take a holy oil, anointed oil. She'll rub your tummy and everything will be over. And then they are going to that side because they don't understand. Their minds are blind and their eyes are blind. And they're looking for healing from Satan they're looking for healing from demons they're looking for healing from people that do not know God I, I think, I believe it's better to die than to stay alive under the occultism of Satan I can't hear the church I said it's better to die and go to heaven than stay on earth under the healing virtue of Satan if you believe that, say Amen you know, people that they're looking for healing at all costs. And then they go to occultic things, occultic practices. Because, uh, you know, this is what we have. We're going to the prayer warriors. Even those prayer warriors, I don't know what they're, what they're looking for. They want to, you know, make a name. And then they're gyrating and turning like this and turning like that. And then speaking some gibberish, some the language that, you know, nobody understands. And there's some barbarism and everything. And then lay, lay hands on those women. And those women themselves. They're looking for children so desperately. And they're looking for healing so desperately. And they're looking for deliverance so desperately. They don't mind what these uh, so-called prayer warrior people are doing. Uh, and because they say they work miracles and all that. Miracles. There are many miracles. Many kinds of miracles. Miracles come from Rome. And miracles come from Babylon. And miracles come from uh, Jericho. Miracles come from everywhere. But the people that stand on the word of God and that say, if I'm not sure where that is coming from, I don't want it. Am I talking to church? Yeah. I say, if you don't know where that is coming from, you're going to reject that thing. Yeah. We don't need all these things. If you're a real child of God, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. If you have asked and God is saying, hold on, it's not giving it yet, you are patient. You are not running to those people that are messengers of Satan and that are going to lead you to hellfire. All those things from now we are going to reject in Jesus' name. Look at that. Look at that. Verse 23 now. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Miracle workers, work of iniquity. And those who are prophesying, you work iniquity. All those things were throw away because we want to get to heaven. At least I want to get to heaven. 
I said, I want to get to heaven. I remember you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We're looking at Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Matthew chapter 25 and I'm reading from verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me ye cursed on into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's where I will not go. I said that's where I will not go. That's why we are standing with the Lord and you are standing in the freedom that has made you free, free from sin and free from Satan and free from occultism and free from blood money and free, free from all the things of the devil. You remain free in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now, the future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. We're reading from verse 37. This is John chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 37. It's says in verse 37, I know that she are Abraham's seed, but she seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If ye were, if ye, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded from and came from God. Neither that came I of myself. He said, he, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because she cannot hear my word. Look at verse 44. It is good to talk straight. And it's good to be pointed when you talk. It's good to be direct when you talk. It's good not to be beating about the bush and living the real sin. You see, there are some preachers, they are not like Jesus Christ because they are trying to avoid trouble. They, they want to make friends of sinners. They want to make friends of back sliders. They want to make friends of their compromisers. Because of that they cannot tell them the truth. They know the truth is at the center here. They'll be parambulating and going around and going around. And you cannot hold them to say this is what he said. I pray that God will remove such preachers from our midst in Jesus name. The preachers who are so afraid of the congregation, afraid of sinners, afraid of backsliders, afraid of compromisers, they cannot tell us the truth. What's the use? What's the use? What are they doing there on, the, on our pulpit? If they cannot tell us the truth of salvation and the truth of sanctification and the truth of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and they just occupy the pulpit, why don't they somebody to carry them away from there and put somebody there that can tell us the truth and point the way to heaven for us, I pray it will happen like that in Jesus' name. You know, I know some leaders nowadays, sometimes I hear of them, somebody uh, will tell me that, sir, uh, you know, we took this case to uh, Pastor so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, instead of telling us who is right and who is wrong, who ought to repent and who ought to make restitution, sir, this, uh, our pastor was moving like this and moving like this, and at the end, we wasted three hours, and they couldn't strike the point. They're afraid of of the people they are talking to, I don't want, I don't want them to know that it's me that said that. Why are you a preacher? Why can't you stand? I stand on the word of God. Look at Jesus now. Look at verse 44. Verse 44. Look at what he said. Uh, if you are there, are you have you seen that verse? Yes. Uh, read it out and let me hear you. Yes. Oh, oh that, that's enough. That's enough. They said, We've been not born of fornication. God is our father. And this they, they said that. Uh, openly and courageously. They said, we were Abraham's seed. How say you are going to make us free? We are the children of Abraham and God Almighty is our father. Look at verse 44. Year of your father, the devil. 
and the laws of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of each. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Look at this. Ye therefore hear them not because, tell me, he told them pointedly, because you are not of God. I pray that same boldness God will give us. That same authority God will give us. And that same assurance as we declare the word of God, the Lord will give every one of our preachers in Jesus' name. Uh, look at these people now, number one. They were captives of deception. They were captives of deception. Their deception had held them in captivity, held them in bondage. And they were totally captivated in that deception. Captives of deception. And what does that mean? I want you to come to uh, this, uh, John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 37. It says, I know that she are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father them and ye do that which ye have seen what your father then answered thee and said unto him Abraham is a father and Jesus said unto them if ye were Abraham's children ye would ye will do the works of Abraham he goes on to say and now you seek to kill me a man that has said told you the truth which I have heard of God this did not Abraham you do the deeds of your father and they said unto him, we be, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, capital F. And they said, even God. And Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. They were captured in deception. They were captured, they were captivated in deception. They didn't understand that the physical circumcision does not make you a child of God. That can refer to Abraham. Abraham is our father. That does not make you saved. You have to repent. You have to have a life of righteousness that will show that you're a real child of God. Look at Romans chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 28. It says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. You see, that was their deception. That was their misconception. It says, it's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And inward change, and inward transformation, an experience of salvation, an experience of sanctification. He is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John chapter 3. What reading from verse 12? It says in 1 John chapter 3, reading from verse 12, not as Cain, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you, ye know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever whosoever bishop whosoever walker whosoever pastor whosoever overseer whosoever member of deeper life whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him you see all those people they hated Jesus Christ because of the truth he was revealing to them and he said 
you want to kill me. You want to, you want to commit murder. And it says, because you have that, you don't have eternal life abiding in you. We come back to John chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 44. Here he tells us in verse 44, the words of Jesus Christ direct unto these people. You have your father, the devil, and the laws of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and about not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. These were children of the devil. Children of the devil. Look at this in John chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 70. John chapter 6. We're looking at uh, verse 70. Here yeah, it tells us Jesus was even talking about one of his followers, one of his disciples, even an officer, a treasurer yeah, among the disciples, among those apostles. Look at what he said in John chapter 6, verse 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And uh, tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. I will not be of the devil. I said I will not be of the devil. And nobody knew. Because that man, he was so quiet and he acted innocent. He looked sheepish. He looked like he was one of them. And yet he was a devil. A devil at heart. Jesus said, I'm not I choosing you twelve. And yet one of you is a devil. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. We're looking at verse 10. And said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou charge of the devil. That's Paul the Apostle. That's what I'm saying. You see, these preachers in the Bible, they were forthright and they were direct and they were confrontational even. They were not people that will be, you know, bending here, bending here, and then afraid of a sorceress, afraid of occultic people, afraid of the powers that be. They cannot tell the truth, but no, this man was trying to withstand the word of God and dissuade and they kind of divert the attention of the deputy from hearing the word. And Paul the apostle spoke directly and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Thou, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease and stop to pervert the right ways of the Lord? I pray God will give us boldness. We're not bold to hurt people. We're bold to make people sinners know that they're sinners. We're bold to help people, backsliders, know that they're backsliders, that they need to get to heaven. We're bold to tell them that this is the way walking they're in. And if they're not walking there, we tell them. And then after telling, we can leave them and go and tell other people the truth of the word of God, but you must tell the truth. I pray God will help you to tell the truth. Amen. Emphasize the truth. Amen. I said emphasize the truth Amen. until the people will know that this is the way and this is the truth and they walk in the truth of God in Jesus in me. First John, first John chapter 3, first John chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 8. First John chapter 3 reading from verse 8. It says he that committed sin is of the devil. You see that again it's clear, it's pointed, it's direct. Let the people know when we're born again it sets us free from sin. When we're born Born again, our lives are transformed, our lives are changed. If our lives have not changed, and we're still managing and patching up and living in secret sin, but uh, you know, don't let them hear, and then we cry and cry and cry crocodile tears, and then we will still go back into that sin. Let the people know that salvation sets us free from sin. And it says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy destroy the works of the devil. This is the day he'll destroy the works of the devil. Every compromise he'll destroy. Every weakness he'll destroy. And then all the yokes that bind you and tie you to Satan or tie you to sin or tie you to backsliding, he'll wash everything away in the power of the blood of the Lamb. He'll make us free and make everyone free in Jesus' name. Now the reason why these people oh, were going to damnation number three here is the cause of their damnation. We're looking at John chapter 8 and we're looking at uh, verse 45. John chapter 8 verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now I need to ask you a question. Now you have heard the truth and you are not accepting the truth and you are not pay praying on the truth and you are not looking at your life and saying, 
This is the truth. Nobody can argue with this. If somebody is living in sin, if Christ comes, he will not go. And we don't know when Christ will come. He might come today. He might come tomorrow. I need to settle this before he comes. If you don't do that, why did you come? Why did you get to the market? You're not buying anything. Why did you get a bucket of water? You are not cleaning yourself. Why are you having the food? You are not eating the food. Why is it you are having the word of God? And you're not benefiting from the word of God. Things will change. You will benefit from the word of God in Jesus' name. And this one will turn your life around and change you. Today, you will not be like you were yesterday in Jesus' name. And then it goes on in verse 46. Which of you convinced me of sin? If I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Then he said, he that is of God heareth God's word. He that is of God heareth God's word. Everybody, he that is of God heareth God's word. God's word. I can't hear you. He that is of God, heareth God's word. You see, if you are really of God, you are simply a child of God. You say, keep on giving it to me. I want more of that. And when the time comes to pray, you will rise up. You take all the points. You take it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, let this word be as water that will cleanse and wash me. Let this word be as, a, as something that will purge a purgative, that will purge everything negative out of my life. He that is of God heareth God's word. But the one who is not of God will hear the word. I think we say, let us pray. They'll go out. They'll go to the toilet somewhere. They'll be roaming about and all that. They are running for the boss. They are running for this. And then you ask them, what are you doing there? He's doing nothing. His life is aimless. It's as, his life has no purpose. Everybody is praying. We want to get to heaven. He doesn't know his destiny. And he's not hearing the word of God. He's not taking everything inside to the word of God. God. You remember in the business where you're doing, the things that go wrong. In the office, the things that go wrong. In your family, the things that have gone wrong. In your personal life, in your internal life, the things that have gone wrong. And the word of God has revealed everything. And he that is of God, heareth God's word. It's at that time we go to God and we say, God, if the, anything that is called sin must get out of my life. Backsliding must get out of my life. I want to, if I'm not sure of my salvation, I want to get back to the cross again to the foot of Calvary again and get really saved, those are the people that want to know God, you will know God. But look at the latter part of that verse 47. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. If we were to look at the heart of everyone and then God were to look at you know, such everything with microscope or telescope or whatever and see the condition of your heart would you say, okay, you love God, you know God, you hear God, you want to do the what come to this side, you you just came. Go to this side. If that will happen in eternity, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Now the word of God has come to us again and he has given us the word very clear. The word of God is very clear that Jesus Christ can set us free and Jesus Christ can break every yoke and Jesus Christ can save us from every sin. And today whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, do so shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Amen. All the yokes of sin will be broken. All the things that are tied up to sin, loving sin, liking sin, and petting sin at the back, and embracing sin, everything will be washed away today. He that will call upon the Lord, freedom is available now. Deliverance is available now. Salvation is available now. A holy life, a clean life is available now. I will call. I said I will call. I can't hear my people. I said I will call. Rise up and tell the Lord and call upon the Lord. Don't let this time pass you by. A time of real salvation. A time of real restoration. A time to be serious with yourself. And a time to be serious against the devil. And say, devil, enough is enough. I'm coming out of that bondage, out of that yoke. And I'm going to be totally free by the power of the Lord today. I'm going to be totally free by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb today. I'm going to be totally free from the sacrifice that Jesus Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Tonight is the night of my freedom. Tonight is the night of my deliverance. Lord set me free. Lord set me free. Lord set me free. And there's no stain of sin that will remain. And there's no shadow of sin that will remain. And there's no bondage of sin that will remain. I will be free. So that as I go back in my office I'll be free. In my home I'll be free. In the market I'll be free. All that anger, all that evil thing in the heart, everything must go 
go today. All that carelessness, everything must go today. All that compromise, everything must go today. I will be free. I'm not depending on title. I'm not depending on your pastor, your worker, your leader, your overseer, your whatever. Today, I want to be free. Lord, set me free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.